inquire, Mr. Wood, I just have a question or two for the <coughs> witness here. Prior to coming in today, have you observed any of the trial testimony in this case in any way? No. Okay. Thanks for that response. In your uh, examination here, we are making a court record, so please make uh, verbal responses to any questions and please try to avoid speaking at the same time as anyone questioning you so the record stays clear. With that in mind, then, Mr. Wood, you can inquire on direct. Yes, my name is Sydney Shank, S-C-H-E-N-K. I am 26 years old. I currently live in Arizona. Sorry, I just realized the mic wasn't on. Okay, thank you, Mr. Wood. <laughs> Uh, do I need to repeat those questions, or do you have me on the record? Did we get it on FDR? I think there's enough to pick it up on okay. the FTR, Mr. Wood, and the reporter got it, apparently. All right. Was there ever a time that you lived in Rexburg, Idaho? Yes. When was that? It was back in 2019. Okay. And what were you doing in Rexburg, Idaho? I was attending BYU Idaho. Uh, were you working at the time? I was not. Okay. Were you, <clears throat> excuse me, were you looking for work? Yes, I was. Okay. How were you going about doing that? I had always nannied and babysat in the past. So I went on a website called care.com where you can place a job listing for nannying or cleaning services or senior care, um, like nursing stuff. And I had placed a listing to, uh, for, to be a nanny. Okay. Through that listing. Mr. Wood, just, I want to make sure we get this. You're, if you can kind of talk right into that mic, they're not yeah. that sensitive. So we'll make sure to get all your testimony. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, through your listing on care.com, did you ever meet a Lori Vallow? I did. She had replied to my listing um, looking for help with her son, JJ. Okay. So you met her through the listing. Um, how did you communicate? We had messaged through the app and then later uh, continued talking through text messaging because it was easier. Okay. Um, so you exchanged numbers? Yes. Did you keep those messages? I didn't. Okay. After messaging with Miss Vallow, did you ever meet her? I did. We had discussed a time for me to come kind of do an interview and see if I was a good fit for them. Um, she had mentioned that JJ had some special needs and that he had autism, and so he required... Um, yeah, just extra help and wanted to make sure that I was a good fit. Okay. Uh, when did you meet her? I met with her on Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. Okay. Uh, where did you meet her? I met with her at her town home in Rexburg. Okay. Uh, how did that interview go? It went well. I arrived at her home and she greeted me warmly, gave me a hug and introduced me to JJ and sort of told me about their life and that they had recently moved to Rexburg from Arizona and that yeah, JJ had some tendencies that he could get emotional easily, uh, distracted, frustrated and has trouble communicating with others and that um, if you gave him a direct, like, command and looked him in the eyes that he would uh, listen better. Okay. While you were there, uh, did she say anything about her husband, Charles Vallow? She did. She had mentioned that he had just recently died of a heart attack and that 
that that JJ was kind of having a hard time like understanding why it happened. Okay. So she, you testified that she told you about JJ and that he had some special needs. Um, while you were there, did you see a teenage girl? I did not. Did she tell you anything about a daughter? She did. She said she had a daughter that also lived in Rexburg and was attending college and that sometimes she would come to visit them for dinner or to do laundry but that her daughter didn't like to babysit without being paid and that's why she needed me to come and help. Okay. Through your interview, did she hire you to watch JJ? Yes, she did. We had discussed a time for me to come the next day. Okay. Um, really quickly, did when I'm going to take you back for just one second. When you spoke with her about her daughter, did she say which school her daughter was attending? Uh, she did not. Okay. Did she say college? From what I remember, yes. Okay. So she hired you to watch JJ. Yes. Um, did you ever have a chance to watch JJ? I did. The following day on the 19th, I went to their town home after I had finished my school that day and watched him for a few hours while she had to go to the airport to pick up a friend. Okay. Um, did she give you any instructions for, any special instructions for JJ that day? Yeah, she did. She talked about kind of what to feed him, what things he likes to do for fun, that I could take him to go play at Gravity Factory, which is like a trampoline park, and that um, if she got home later, that I could give him his medication that helps him fall asleep faster. Okay. Um, what do you remember about watching JJ that day? I remember it went pretty well. He just played outside with the neighbor friends and kids for a while. Um, I brought him in to feed him dinner and then he went back out to play at their house. Um, so I went back to her town home and waited and kind of cleaned and then I went to go pick him up and uh, JJ and his friend had gotten in some sort of dispute over not sharing toys and so I had him come home and when he came home, he was very upset and sad that his friend didn't want to play with him anymore. Uh, he got pretty angry and like threw the ottoman and uh, threw like a chair. And I tried to calm him down best I could, but um, eventually he ran upstairs and just kind of wanted to be alone and hide. Um, so I let him stay upstairs for a while and hoping that he would calm down, but he didn't. Okay. Um, did you have any other contact with Lori Vallow that night? I did. So when she came home, he was still pretty upset. And I kind of explained to her what had happened with the friend and she calmed him down and her brother was there and her friend was there now. and. She had paid me in cash, and we didn't really talk much about another time to babysit just because of the situation that happened with JJ, so she paid me, and I left. Okay. Did you believe that you would be watching JJ again? Yes. It was sort of an unspoken knowledge that I was going to work full time, like that he would need nearly da daily assistance okay. and babysitting. So. Did you have any further communications with Lori? I did. So a few days had passed after that, and I had texted her wondering when I could come work again. Um, and she responded that JJ had gone to his grandparents for a month and that she was in Hawaii for a month. And that after that month had passed, I could message her again and uh, talk about a time to come back and babysit. So she said JJ was with his grandparents. And he would be for a month? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Did you ever try to contact Lori Vallow again? I did. So that month had passed, and I reached out again, and she never communicated back with me again after that. Okay. Did you ever see J.J. Vallow after September 19th? No, I did not. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the state has no further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Cross-examination. So just, just briefly uh, to follow up, on September 18th when you met uh, Lori at her home, was J.J. also there? Yes, he was. And so you were able to observe the, uh, his demeanor and his, uh, his personality? Yes. And then uh, when she was talking to you about him and she was planning on having you work for, for her long term, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And was there a schedule like every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, a, a plan like that? <coughs> Not that I remember, no. Okay. And so it was just that you'd be called frequently as the need arose? Yes. And because you were a student, uh, your, your uh, schedule was flexible? Yes. And so you a agreed to be able to provide assistance as the need arose? Yes, that's correct. Was it uh, daytime, evening that you had uh, had time available? Uh, it just depended on when my classes were. I, I don't remember the specific times. Okay. And so this uh, the time that you spent with, with Lori and JJ on September 18th, uh, you were given a lot of information about JJ so you could take care of him a uh, long term for like uh, the next several months or a year. Was there talk about that? Uh, there wasn't specific talk about long term, like a year, but I was, yeah, expecting at least the next several months to be able to work. And so you weren't planning on leaving town, you weren't graduating and and, and leaving town right then that, that semester? No, not for a couple years. Okay. So uh, with your uh, talking with, with Lori, uh, she was giving you information to, so that you could plan on how to take care of JJ long term. Yes. And, and with uh, your knowledge of JJ's special needs, you agreed to that? Yes, I did. There was, uh, she didn't give, Lori didn't give you any indication, did she, that, hey, I'm just hiring you for this week and then never again? No, she didn't. Okay. All right, thank you. Any redirect, Mr. Wood? No, Your Honor, and this witness may be released from her subpoena. All right. Any objection to the witness being released? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you.